This is a report from ACM on the appointment of the new government of New South Wales. Acting on the advice of the Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of Australia, has appointed a distinguished new governor of New South Wales, the highly respected Justice Margaret Beasley. And so the good governance of Australia continues smoothly, efficiently, and inexpensively, allowing for us to continue to have leadership beyond politics and that essential check and balance in the Westminster system in New South Wales. The office of the Governor of New South Wales is the oldest in the land. It dates back to 1788, the date of the settlement. It went through a major change in the middle of the 19th century when the British granted self-governance to the various colonies. By the 1850 Australian Constitutions Act, the colonies were invited to submit their own constitutions, what they wanted to London, which they did. And in 19, 1855, New South Wales had its own constitution, with the governor acting as the local constitutional monarch, exercising the powers of the crown in relation to the local Westminster system. It was under this and a similar system in the other colonies that Australia advanced ahead remarkably, so much so that by the turn of the century, the people of the several states had decided to themselves federate into one country, into Australia. For the very first time in the world, the people themselves took the decision to do this, and this was assisted by the British through the British Parliament. The next step in our development was in 1926, when in London, at a meeting of the Prime Ministers of the Dominions, it was decided that the Dominions, and each of them, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, South Africa, should become independent within the British Commonwealth. And that was affected by the Declaration and then by legislation, the Statutes of Westminster, which went through the British Parliament. But in relation to Australia, it had a special feature, and that was that it did not apply to the states. The states did not become part and subject to the Statute of Westminster. And this reflected a conflict between the states and the Commonwealth and the fear on the part of the states that if Canberra were involved in the appointment of governors, or in fact made the appointments, those governors would act as prefects controlling the states and not as the governors, separate representatives of the Crown acting independently as they did hitherto and have done since. That system even continued after the adoption of the Statute of Westminster federally, and it was continued to continue until later in the 20th century, and rather inappropriately because it meant that any appointment of governor and matters relating to the states concerning the Crown went through the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in London, and not directly to the Queen, nor through Canberra. The Queen herself offered the solution, which seemed to have escaped all of the politicians. She said that unlike any other part of the Commonwealth, she was prepared to be advised not only by the Prime Minister of Australia, but also by all of the Premiers in relation to state matters. This was enacted in legislation in 1986 called the Australia Acts, Acts because they are Acts of the British, Australian and State Parliaments. And under these, the powers of the Crown in each state are exercised by the Governor, except when the Queen is present in the state, and except in relation to the appointment and the removal of governors, which is done by the Queen as Queen of Australia. 
this is a remarkable system because it allows each of the premiers to advise the Queen directly. This could never have been arranged or worked out in a republic. It can only work in a constitutional monarchy and its importance was underplayed in the debates in 1999 concerning the Keating Turnbull Republic. But the system works well, it's efficient, it's economic, and it allows for leadership beyond politics, given by the extraordinary governors we've known in Australia. But it also ensures that the essential checks and balances in our state constitutions continue in place. This report came to you from Australians for Constitutional Monarchy. We are the largest and oldest grassroots organization in Australia. We provided the engine room for the victory in the 1999 referendum. I do invite you to join us. There's no fee for joining and there never has been a fee for joining. But you will find that we will represent Australians in relation to preserving and protecting and defending the Constitution, the role of the Crown in it, and the Australian flag. Do join us at norepublic.com.au. And until next time, I'm David Flint for Australians for Constitutional Monarchy.